Hello, I'm Andrew Smith, course chair of T216 Cisco Networking, as well as many other Cisco networking modules at the Open University. This presentation is about teaching by Twitter some experimentation and actual work we're doing with our Cisco networking students during presentation at the moment at the Open University. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm Tarek Noor. If you want to ask questions about the work I'm doing, as you can see at the bottom, my email address is andrew.smith at open.ac.uk. Just to give a little bit of context and background, because I appreciate many of you are not networking geeks, Cisco is a large internetworking routing and switching manufacturer. In plain English, they make the equipment that runs little things like the internet. We have a module on our undergraduate computing program that has a reasonable number of students on it, around four to 500 each presentation, which makes us one of the largest Cisco academies in the world and a modest module within our provision at the Open University. Basically, we teach internet network engineers to run these technologies. Our idea was why can't we use social media to enhance the teaching of our Cisco modules? There's a community already out there. There's a community of professionals, a community of enthusiasts, and a community of people that want to become network engineers. So if we create something that leaks out onto the internet, we're raising the profile of our modules, as well as enhancing the teaching of our existing students using social media. We know when our teaching starts, we know when our teaching finishes, and we know broadly each week what our students should be studying, what chapters, what subjects, specifically what topics. So, we have this reality. All of our students do study at their own pace. But we have this study calendar concept and we have waypoints in all modules, whether they're TMAs, the assignments, examinations, day schools, tutorials or other events that module teams have created. So if we put out a tweet every day, say around tea time, it doesn't matter if the student is ahead, behind or on track. The point is it'll either become a reminder reinforcement or if we're very lucky it'll be at almost exactly the time they're studying it which means that it will be a bit of associated knowledge so I don't like spending money um, I'm a little tight-fisted and free is a price I'm willing to play I don't know what platform my students are going to use I don't know if they're using Android I don't know if they're using a tablet I don't know if they're iPhone enthusiasts using Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer or Windows, Mac or Linux and I don't care everywhere the software is now being created for us everybody can use Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn and Twitter from their phones, tablets, browsers or whatever so my view was let's use them all do not develop anything new makes life easy but what I did is connect it all together using this old idea of web 2.0 and I mashed it all up I use CSVs which are a kind of spreadsheet and I push it into a platform called Hootsuite which automates my outputs, my updates, my little bits of knowledge and it goes automatically into Google, Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. I link a blog as well but I use something called an RSS feed which means it also appears on our Moodle site within the Open University so my students can choose to participate in this or not. If they choose not to, they still get the content freely as part of their normal learning experience or they could use an RSS reader. Again, I don't care, nor should I. Already, we've run this for two presentations now. We've got a large community of um, network engineers out there supporting this. There's about 300 of them in one group. There is in Facebook three completely different groups um, involved in this. The 110 is the student run group, but they're very willing, active, and they engage with the module team as part of the group. And the 1200 is where we port some software onto the map platform. Twitter is very interactive. We get 300 plus followers, plenty of retweets, lots of favorites, and some interesting engagement. Google Plus, sadly, it's not very popular, 
but it does enable us to create the RSS feed and have a platform that is searchable via the Google search engine. So it brings alternative benefits, additional benefits. We use the CSV, the comma separated um, values file, because it's a spreadsheet where I can actually push it straight into the publisher. I know my content and I just sequentially went through the content and extracted knowledge nuggets that were 140 characters and created precision of thought and precision of knowledge. You can have them a minimum of five minutes apart. We do no more than four or six outputs a day at maximum, at peak. But the beauty is that we can just push them out by putting them into a spreadsheet and I've only got to sit um, spend 10 minutes loading them into Hootsuite to run for every block of our presentation. The only rule is you can't have any repetition whatsoever of any of the outputs you put out. And actually that's not a good move because people get very bored of what you're doing. We've created around 1,200 automated updates. Each time we've iterated, edited, evolved and developed them that can be reused, amended, added. Some of them are subject based and some of them are module heartbeats where we're saying next week your TMA is due. Next week you should study chapter five or block two, for example. So it actually helps the student manage their own learning. We love the engagement feature of using social media and it's good to mix it up. We use memes, we use plenty of images where appropriate. Humor is acceptable. Use videos. I mean, in our world, there's lots of geeky networking videos. There are some training videos on YouTube. We link to articles involving network security or hacks, um, events that take place um, worldwide. You know what you need for your subject, and you know what kind of humor or images or other content is applicable, useful, and you should share with your students anyway. They are human. Talk to them. They don't bite. They t questions do come in from the students via different social media outlets. We think that they should speak to their tutor or speak on, you know, talk on the forums. But the reality is, people will engage with whatever platform is most accessible and comfortable for them. Allow them to engage. Allow others to engage as well. There are people out there on the internet that are not involved with the OU that do know our subjects as well. It, encourage them. You find that you develop a community of allies as well. And we've got some wonderful allies in Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn that are great. Facebook is interesting. Um, sometimes all we got was likes and sometimes we got shares and sometimes we got whole dialogues and conversations taking place. The same with Twitter. Sometimes it would be very, very busy and other times it would be very quiet. And it could have been the update or it could just be the time of day, time of week or time of year. Open questions work. Followers like to ask answer these. They like to actually show off what they've learned. Getting the opinion of the audience, not too often, but occasionally also gets a response. Um, take a note of which posts you get a reaction from. It may surprise you. It might be a bad reaction, not that we've ever had one. Often we get good reaction or interesting reactions. We get observations and additional geek techie information as well and one or two posts we've ditched them either because they're um, sort of too long or dull they're not you know hitting the knowledge right or we've got we found ones that are popular and we've reused them because I think that is entirely appropriate there are as I've already said many allies out there and this is one thing that a community of associate lecturers or module teams can work together and it's very useful when you want people just to like something share something or retweet something there's nothing wrong with putting something out there and um, getting others to join in. Today I've written an article on a well-known news site and I've already had colleagues in the JISC and the Open University retweet that for me and the end of a person I'm working with. So we do use that for each other as well. What we're doing next, 
and I think that's quite important to understand. We're using this very much as an action research process. We're iterating, we're developing it. It's not a static experience. I'm already um, reiterating and building a new set of CSVs. I'm curating the content. I've actually just created a batch for the quiet period over the summer. I'm refining the times, hitting the more popular times. I'm working on my allies. I've actually got a group of students I'm chatting to about this. And I'm actually working with the OU cybersecurity MOOC and actually replaying these experiences now into that MOOC community as well. So the beauty of this is it doesn't matter what the content is, the community is out there and interested in what you have to share. So if you have any questions, please do tweet me, please do ask, please do email. There is work going on where we're happy to actually support others in the development of their teaching by Twitter or any other social media platform. And I think this is a good way of just enabling some of our open university content to become more visible without giving away our copyright into the social media space. So, thank you very much.